I'm Apple Vesa, and uh, well, Visa actually, uh, and uh, I'm here to talk about the powering up of. Uh, sorry, powering up of discoverable bus attached devices on DT platforms. Um, or how Linux, Linux Valet put it, discoverable buses that aren't quite discoverable, which, I mean, could have been the title of this talk. Uh, so let me first start to talk a bit about who am I. Uh, I work for uh, Linaro, and I mainly focus on bringing Qualcomm upstream support. Uh, I've been involved in uh, almost a year now, which is the how long I've been, uh, well, actually a year and a half almost, which is how long I've been with Leonardo. I've been working on uh, bringing up two of the latest Qualcomm platforms in upstream. One of them is still ongoing. Uh, I'm also the maintainer on IMX, the NXP's IMX clock drivers. And uh, yeah, one of the coolest things of working in uh, for Linaro on uh, Qualcomm platforms is, uh, well, I get to understand the hardware bits, but with a kernel perspective in mind. So I'm a software guy after all. Um, and by the way, this is my first attendance at LPC, so yeah. Uh, so I've split this uh, talk into five parts. Uh, I'm gonna talk about, uh, introduce basically all the uh, players and what's the disconnect between the discoverable buses and uh, devices on uh, DT-based platforms. Uh, then I go to I'll go through a very specific use case, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, use case, which is found on quite a few Qualcomm platforms, not only, but uh, and uh, including the laptop that I'm, I have right here, the X13s, Lenovo ThinkPad X13s, uh, and I'll go step by step for this one. Um, then I'll go through some of the solutions and workarounds we we were considering for fixing the PCI. Uh, Wi-Fi issue we had. Um, then I'm gonna talk about the powering power sequencing subsystem, a proposal that was done, I think, in the last decade or so, uh, and how it would solve uh, at least half of the problem. And then uh, the second part of that would be USB onboard hub use case, which solves the other part basically, uh, and. Um, how it could be still a good fit for us, but it's, uh, let's say, more hacky. Uh, and then at the end, I'll share some of my thoughts and ideas about the possible solutions and uh, what could work. So let's go through introduction first. Uh, why is this important in the first place? So it seems it becomes more common and uh, the problem itself and uh, it's having impact of, on both the power consumption and uh, adding support for new hardware and I'll explain that later on. Um, I should probably describe what a discoverable bus is and then non-discoverable bus as opposed to discoverable one and a, what a DD platform based is just to make sure that we have the basis. Um, so, a discoverable bus is basically any bus that you, uh, you have any kind of inter interrogative action uh, over the bus in order to figure out if there, there are any kind of uh, child devices attached to it. Uh, usually you have a controller that starts this action and then enumerates whatever is found on the other end. Uh, and examples of such buses are PCI, USB, SDIO, Slim Bus, so on. Uh, on the other hand, non-discoverable buses uh, rely on information provided solely by uh, 
device tree, board files, say CPI tables. Uh, examples of non-discoverable buses are uh, UART, SPMI, I squared C, and so on. Um, so what's a device tree based platform? So compared to any other ones like board files or AC ACPI, uh, the devices along with the resources are described in uh, device tree files. And most of the ARM based platforms nowadays are uh, DT based platforms. So, so what's the disconnect between those two worlds, the discoverable buses and DT based platforms? Uh, long story short, uh, discoverable bus, a device that sits on a discoverable bus needs to be uh, powered on in order to be discovered. And since DT platforms don't have a way to do such thing, uh, most of the time we end up forcing resources to be always uh, enabled. And this has an impact on power consumption, obviously. Um, so I know the title of the presentation is about discoverable buses in general, but I thought that discuss, discussing a specific scenario would help make it more rela uh, relatable and uh, maybe we fix it sooner. So I know there is also another uh, talk in the uh, PCI uh, microconference about this. I just found out it, it's not the same topic it's similar but not entirely the same and there's also a buff tomorrow at 11 i think where we can discuss so if you're interested be sure to check those out um so the wi-fi and bluetooth case on uh, x13s Since I daily drive the X13S, uh, I'll talk about this specific case because it, inf it, it affects me directly. Uh, living resources like regulators that always on or uh, things like that have a heat on the battery life. Uh, but this issue is not limited to X13S or even Qualcomm platforms. In fact, every DT-based uh, platform out there that int integrates any device over PCI actually suffers of this exact same issue. And the PCI is just one of the discoverable buses. So this issue is actually more common than we think. But uh, what is X13S? Can you share a few words? Oh, yeah. It's uh, the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad, this laptop, actually. And it has, I'm going to go through this. It, it's a Qualcomm-based platform. So it's a DT platform, basically. But yeah, I'll go through this shortly. Um, So, PCI, Wi-Fi, and UART Bluetooth on X13S. So we have three uh, components, basically, three players in this case. We have the uh, WCN6855, uh, which is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo chip. We have the PIMIC, which provides the regulators for the PIMIC. And we also have the SOC, which is a Qualcomm one. Um, most of the support upstream has been done by uh, at least for the uh, Wi-Fi was has been done by Johan Hobold and he takes credit for this, but I had to do the same thing a couple of weeks ago for uh, the latest compute platform from Qualcomm. But I'll focus on X13S because it's more available and everything that I'm presenting here is already merged upstream. So if anyone wants to have a look, yeah. Uh, also, the X13S scenario is interesting for another reason. It's because it also uses a non-discoverable bus, the UART one. So uh, we can see the differences uh, between the discovery process and what's missing with respect to the discoverable buses. So the X13S uses WCN, as I said, and then uh, the PMIC and the, uh, the SOC. And uh, there are a couple of things that are controlled by the SOC on behalf of the Wi-Fi chip. So the regulators and a couple of GPIOs. And those are important because there is a, an order of doing things with respect to powering up, which I will be getting into uh, in the next slides. Um, so this is how the hardware looks like. Now let's move on to kernel support. Um, so we define the regulators, whatever, in uh, the uh, 
PIMIC node. And uh, this is just one example. Uh, by default, these regulators are left in a specific state by the bootloader, but with, uh, when it comes to Bluetooth, we don't really care because the Bluetooth driver takes care of, of themselves, of them itself. But on the Wi-Fi part, that's where the things are a bit complicated. And uh, that's basically the problem that we're trying to address. So enabling the Bluetooth, basically we add all the regulators and the GPIOs based on the uh, schematics that we were looking at, schematics. And uh, the first regulator here is needed by both Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth. Second one is just Bluetooth. For the, four, the last four ones are only Wi-Fi. Uh, then uh, they, they need to be, again, they need to be uh, handled in a specific order. Uh, and this is what we call a power sequence. And it involves toggling the enable GPIO and the software control GPIO as well. And again, this is part of the presentation as well. Uh, so for now, we'll, we'll focus on the Bluetooth. Um, and uh, if everything is correct, and from the T point of view, and obviously the driver, we have the Bluetooth driver probing successfully. Uh, everything was easy. So let's just look at how the discovery process has has handled this. And it's we can't really call it a discovery, but why not? Uh, so it's basically uh, in, triggered, initiated by the Genai uh, uh, controller and using the off-populate, uh, off-platform populate, which loops through all the child device three nodes and registers uh, each one of them as a device. This is why the device doesn't need to be powered on beforehand and as it relies on device three data only. So if the device three says it's there, then there is no doubt about it. Uh, now let's move on to the Wi-Fi uh, and we'll compare facts after. So. In order to enable the Wi-Fi, we enable the PCIe instances along with the, the Fi, we boot, and uh, if we're lucky, we might not, we might end up having the ATH probing successfully. But it, on the other hand, if we're not lucky, we don't get anything. So it doesn't probe, it, it doesn't get discovered. So we start digging and uh, trying to f figure out why it doesn't work. And uh, somebody might point out that, well, we're lacking the, we're lacking the device to know it. So yeah, sure. We should probably go ahead and uh, do that. And uh, so we go ahead and add the uh, PCI host controller and the child device to know for Wi-Fi and uh, we also add the regulators and the GPIO, like we did for the, the, the Bluetooth. And uh, for the sake of the argument, we assume that the ATH driver already handles those resources correctly, which, by the way, it will have to do due to the power sequencing I mentioned earlier. We'll discuss that later. But guess what? It's still not discovered. So we start digging again. We look through everything we consider might be a problem. And in the end, we blame the regulators and we say, you know what? Let's mark them as always on in device three, just in case. So we go ahead and do that. Maybe that will fix it. And uh, when we uh, boot again, the device is there. So it gets discovered. Probes, so that means we have Wi-Fi support. Okay, but what about the uh, regulators that we just marked as always on? Those might raise some eyebrow, eyebrows uh, when the support gets sent on the list, right? Well, actually not, because this is already a known issue by now. But let's just in case, let's figure out what happened. So. Um, the, act, the, the actual discovery, in this case, it's a discovery. It's initiated by the uh, PCI host, host controller driver via the uh, PCI host probe, 
which ultimately loops through all the slots this time on uh, the PCI bus, rather than going through the device to nodes, uh, and does some reads over the bus, and basically, uh, if uh, whatever device it finds, it populates that one. And uh, yeah, but since the device wasn't powered up before, the discovery was failing. So it's obvious that any device that is not powered up will not be discovered and therefore not registered. But let's compare side by side the facts for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So uh, Bluetooth is a platform device, which implies the second point, which is it's being discovered solely by the device tree information. On the other hand, Wi-Fi is a PCIe device, which implies the second point here, meaning it is discovered by bus scanning, which means device to node is totally ignored. Then back to Bluetooth, being discovered solely on device tree means that the state of the device doesn't matter, meaning it can be powered off entirely during discovery. Then on the Wi-Fi side again, being discovered by the bus scanning means the device needs to be discovered, obviously, and needs to be powered on during discovery. And last thing is that the device uh, tree compatible string is used differently. So in case of Bluetooth, it's used for matching the device against the driver, while in case of Wi-Fi, it is actually used to match the device tree node against the device that has been discovered. Sorry? No. It doesn't use the compatible property for matching. Uh, the, the mapping between uh, device tree nodes and discoverable device is done as the tree is walked, and it looked at the reg property to find the slot number uh, on every and, and device number on every. So uh, it looks. So it looks for uh, vendor and product. No. The, the the mapping between device nodes and uh, and PCI device is done until it, it's, it's until it's positional. Look at the death cell. It look at the the, the the slot. Yes, you have to do that. Yes. I mean, I wrote that code. But, but, <laughs> yeah. but the device tree node gets attached only after the discovery. No. The the, the the device tree node is attached to the device during the discovery. The device tree node is attached to the device during the discovery. By the time the driver gets loaded, the device tree node has already been attached. Yeah. Uh, okay, maybe I'm missing something here. So, if the device, so first thing in the uh, device discovery is reading the vendor ID. No, no, no. no. Yeah, you, because you, we you, do you, that you before. Know, you, the order of things happen is you read the device ID out in uh, when you add the device, and then the the node is added after that. So the problem yeah, is you can't. Of, yeah, yeah, it's part of the of the population of the truck PCI day. Sure, but that's but you're before you can even know to look for a vendor or device ID, you have to know where to look. However, that's and that's coming from DT. So I mean, we had that conversation the other day, but yes, <laughs> let's not go down that path just no. yet. Okay, all right. There, there are a number of solutions here. Okay, um, but I can, mean, I had that problem on I Max. A, can I make another ago. comment? The, the point is, the point is, whatever you describe in DT doesn't help bringing up the device. If okay, you know, can I, so that's, that's, I agree with you. Why did the hardware designers think this was possible? <laughs> great, 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 great. This breaks the PCI spec. This is not okay. This is not a real. Yeah, okay. so, uh, so on a meta comment, how does Windows do this? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's ACPI platform. Yes. I hope so. So does the ACP, does the so Windows ACPI plugin just know it's there? No, there's some magic driver in Windows so that does very well. talking about right. DT-based okay. platforms now. We don't really care about the other ones. Well, that's, no, no, this is an ACP, it's an ACPI platform, right? This is ACPI giving you the device tree. Oh, God. Yeah, so it's solved in the Windows case by ACPI when you power up uh, uh, either controller or the root port, then it will, behind the scenes, power up the device as well. Uh, well, 
it, it, it solves the problem at least. Well, okay, so, I mean, well, all right, let me take a step, a step back. It's, it's an old problem. I've, I had the exact same problem on PowerBooks and PowerMax 15 years ago. Um, and you can understand for power management reasons, you might want to avoid the power spike at boot because suddenly you have to turn everything on to be able to probe it. That kind of suck. So uh, I think there is a legitimate reason to want to be able to describe things that are not powered on. And there might be ways to do that on discoverable with PCI, such as PCI or, or USB. But let's not go straight to the solution just yet because I think you, you want to say more things. We have, we have a both, both uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. session tomorrow. Yes. And we also have another talk by uh, Lizzie Hu. Oh, yeah. So, I, I mean, I'll, I'll make a meta comment. We were asking for the people to design hardware to use the discoverable buses like USB and PCI for forever because they would solve the problems. They did, we know they it did half of it. <laughs> they, they put it on there, but they still didn't make it discoverable. Yes. Uh, all right. But Greg, Greg the, you, you have to realize that this is Grant right here. So, Greg, the, the reason PCI was, was really targeting servers and, and more higher power environments. And we're talking now about lower power environments. Oh, where, I know, I know, but we, right? we've so had PCI hope. on these tiny things before. Right, but the design wasn't originally coming up from that level, and the designers here were trying to save power, and they did. I agree, but it's almost there. <laughs> <laughs> so close. It is so close. Okay, fair enough. Right. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, point is, device 3 node doesn't help with respect to powering up the device before discovery happens. That's the bottom line, okay. Um, so now that we know how this is happening, let's move on to the power sequencing that I mentioned earlier. Um, I've said that there is a specific order that the resources need to be enabled to have Bluetooth working properly and obviously Wi-Fi. Uh, so the way that the driver, the Bluetooth driver currently does is basically first enabling the regulators and the clocks, wait a bit, uh, then uh, you enable the GPIO, which enables the entire uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo chip. Then you wait a, a bit again, and then you check for the clock supply from the SOC. This is all specific to the WCN6855. Other Wi-Fi combo chips have different requirements with respect to uh, enabling those resources. Even the order differs sometimes. So. Uh, for the platform devices, we handle this by in probe usually. The probe is the perfect place to establish the order that the resources might uh, need to be powered on. But in case of Wi, in case of the PCI device, the Wi-Fi chip that we described earlier, that's not the case. At least not for the power up. Uh, sequence. You can handle those resources, but not when it comes to the power up. And this is where the power sequencing subsystem was suggested as a, as a solution for this specific use case. And uh, I'm going to talk about that for a bit. Uh, it was so basically the idea behind was that. Uh, you have a power sequencer that would be an entity that would provide abstracted power on power off reset operations for the consumer devices that have such a need. For example, MMC, SDIO devices, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo chip that I just mentioned earlier, and onboard hub device, uh, onboard USB hub devices. And list goes on. It's not limited to those. Um, so it was initially proposed back in 2014 as a standalone subsystem. For some reason, it wasn't merged that way. So it was merged as part of the MMC subsystem. Then, fast forward seven years later, there was another try to make this a standalone subsystem. And here is uh, when we consider that it might be a solution for the Wi-Fi uh, PCIe power-up sequence. Uh, so let's just look at how that's supposed to work. Uh, basically, you'd you would have a device tree. Sorry. Uh, driver for each uh, PowerSeq device, provider driver that would implement some 
some of those ops, not necessarily all of them. Uh, and uh, then you would create the instance and you would register it with the generic framework, like the provider and the consumer uh, case that we already know. Um, now, some, someone might, might point out that this is actually overlapping with the GenPD uh, functionality. Well, at least on the list somebody did. But the difference is that the GenPD is supposed to be used only for on-chip power domain providers, while this could be used for complex power sequences that use off-chip resources. But then somebody might say, why don't you do it via reset controllers? But the reset controllers does not, does not offer, or at least does not map one-to-one -one with the ops that a power sequencer might have. So this is where basically the, uh, the, the range of uh, uh, use cases for the power sequencer might, might, might be. And um, we might still need it after all even for this problem. Now, moving on to the consumer side, uh, you would get that instance and you would control it via some generic uh, APIs. Uh, this can be extended later on if necessary, and we don't really have an, a, a specific list of ops that a power sequencer driver might need. So maybe you need a, a post power on or something like that. Um, and from device tree point of view, you would have the power sequencer uh, device tree property that is used by the consumer. And I think this is where uh, Rob had a comment about the bindings, because it was using, uh, I think it was something like BT dash PVR SEQ. And uh, he was against the bindings, so kind of died there. So in case of Bluetooth, this would work fine. We would just uh, add the BT property instead of all these uh, existing regulators and the GPIO, like so. And then uh, you would have the same support that you had for Bluetooth. So, so on, on Wi Fi, even, even if we do this, this since it's no more the regulator in place it would not work with the policy concern either. So we still only solve half the problem, which is powering the, those resources in a specific order. But uh, we need some other solution for that. So we were looking at the USB on board hub approach for that. And uh, okay, what, why would this back for the Wi-Fi? Because you take the mic, please. Yeah. So actually, I had a real question. I don't know. I'll be up right here. Uh, right here. There's a fundamental difference between Bluetooth and a DCI device, and that is usually we have the notion of a slot for a DCI device. And the intent originally in the 90s when they were developing hot plug for DCI was that you would name the slot for your power management and power device, not the device. So adding the properties to the device kind of is the wrong place to put it from the original intent. So that doesn't mean it's wrong in matter, but that sort of doesn't fit with the original intent of it. You, uh, See someplace? You see someplace where there's a slot name here? The idea of, because when you're trying to probe a PCI device, you're actually in the configuration space, you have special bit cycles that are poking at a particular um, hard coded address, so to speak. You enumerate those through them in order to find all the possible devices there. Is right. there some place where you're talking about a slot in this context? So the, it's, the PCI node itself, the device code is. I didn't buy that slot. So I think it uh, well, doesn't have to be. But this is, this is not the way that we think that I didn't buy a slot. It's not that I got a slot. Part the slot is known, the device is not. Yes. Yes, but the model is a bit interesting here because it's not PCI slot. We actually have backsides from going from the power regulator to the device that are not PCI slot. And so. Which is the way this guy half works, it's out of band segments. Well, on the way we find that's a chill for soft. This is not quite a case. We have specific wiring going back into the chip, which are not part of the PCI bag. That's what PCI is. It's an out of band. But it's it's specified. No, there's, you can do that there. There's lots of that there. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing as PCI It's specified that it essentially call this AFL method or something, which will go and wipe the wipe API, which is what we want. 
only what we want is to say yes, it's right, so the, 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 the problem is we don't know that there is. So there's two problems. First, we don't know that something is to turn. Uh, and the second one is this is this all again uh, come with the basic idea that we're going to need to turn that thing on to discover it. Which is going to mean in the thing of itself. The point of the slot is to know to look at it. Yes, that's all. Yeah, but you don't mean yeah. But, so what I was going to talk is in an adult world, through your bias, bias to learn some engineers and stuff, you will have the ability, and I don't want to take something to that chip, to only turn on the part of the chip that respond to PCI and leave everything at right away, all the power and every stuff off. Because you don't want to turn on that chip on. And but that's the way it takes time, parts of something is complex, you use a lot of energy, and you don't want to have a big spike because you're just turning everything on to your motherboard just to be able to program. Because you read all of PCI, you don't want to turn on. Exactly. So you you potentially want to look at whether there is some granularity here that you can apply to only turn on enough logic to respond to PCI for cycles. Uh, on on Mac I did that to solve that sort of the problem on the Apple businesses. Ages and ages ago, and I would just turn everything on at good time because that was an easy way out. But a lot of platform query in code in the current that knew about the platform and just know I didn't do that like that, right? It wasn't abstracted in any way. Uh, the, the, the problem in general beyond PCI, uh, because it probably exists on a bunch of those devices for USB and other things like this, it's about wire the board. My PC on the side and has all the connections around is do we want to consider uh, the concept of using the device like we've done already in the past on Spark and Park to generate fabricate CIA without probing? Yes, I do. That's what I think that with the fire of a million cells. Um, it went through 24 revisions, but I don't know a better way. <laughs> Uh, and, and in doing so, I do it better than what we just said, because again, today we have this internet device on, which in the minute we register it, the PCI code will start working in the space and things will go wrong. So, the, the add to this, we said that we create the PCI there, we tell the PCI code on the USB core, whatever it is, this device exists, it is there, but it's off. And we have that so that it's off there, so that we don't. Yeah. <laughs> So, what you're describing is a hot plug PCI bus. Lots of so, 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 hot plug PCI was a random that they said you could do whatever you want. They finally standardized on the UA PCI standard. But in the beginning, we still have some old drivers. There's some crazy out of band, and we plug, and we plug, hey, we So, you can do that here. You can say, you want to rescan a bus? It's the same idea. You say, okay, I'm turning on this, and is it a real device there or not? To describe the PC, you write a PCI hot plug driver, you bind to the slots, because this is a slot, you don't have a real place yet, and away you go. And it's almost what the onboard hub does. Except you don't have a platform driver, with, which has only the sole purpose of powering up the hub in order to be discovered. But you can do that. Make a PCI. Okay. So the PCI hot plug driver is an in slots are an independent entity of PCI devices in the system. Yes, but going back to the fact that you don't, the, the device you know is not used at all before. It's, it's not no, even. You, you describe in DT the slots, the okay. thing, and that's what you describe. So slots are independent of devices. There's a binding yeah, based on whatever the platform is. The, the problem you have on that path is <coughs> if you, if you, why you go back to the user, you want basically the driver to be loaded, to know the device is there. So, what you describe, NDT, the slots, and what is going to be behind it. And then your new PCI hot plug driver, which is a PCI, it's an onboard PCI, whatever you want to call it. For right. right. So, why don't we just move the whole logic in the uh, PCI without having a, a, a dedicated device stream? No, it's just for powering up the... Because it's a slot, you have to. That's the way the PCI works. Well, we're talking about it there. But I'm saying that it's actually, it should be really, it's really simple to write a PCI hot plug driver because but I did it and I did it. I, I, I argue that doesn't solve the problem. We'll talk about it later. But it barely does. 
No, it doesn't. It's simple because this is this is just like the old. And then away you go. You guys, I think Abel needs to move on, otherwise we're not going to get. Okay, done fair enough. But I mean, this is almost what the USB onboard hub does because you're describing a DT a hub, and you know you can power it on because they had a DT binding, and then after that, all the USB devices are found. Yes, but then we would have to go through all the Wi-Fi, so in this case, the Atero drivers, and add. A no, 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 no. You have a, so this, so the USB onboard hub is all it is is a hub driver. So yes. you describe your USB devices underneath it and you have an out of band power to turn on and off, control power manage whatnot. You, your DT, the way this works, the DT says, I have some USB devices under there. Here's the resources for powering on. And away it goes, it creates that. And then it, those hand, those new devices are found by the USB core and away you go. So this so, is the way P okay. PCI hub plug works. You scan it, you find it, and then you hand it off to the US, the PCI okay. core. So if I understand this correctly, yeah. you're saying add a hub. No, add a every, something like a hub, like yeah. the like a slot. It's a slot. Okay. It, the slot is going to do your power management for this PCI device behind. It. The, but the, it still needs to handle every device out there that's over it, PCI. It, exactly. That's why PCI hub plug works today. You you don't have to write. There's like a five PCI hub plug drivers in the kernel. You don't have to. Yeah, all it controls is the hardware that powers on and off a slot. Okay. Yeah. So the, the problem is that we they, have support for that already. Uh, slot is for slots, but that's standard PCI because it defines what the power rails are. Well, no, you can have. Well, there's also platform specific PCI hot load drivers. Right. Because it came before they decided to standardize it. Yeah. So we can handle the kernel can handle any of these crazy things. The, the problem is that here it's not platform specific. It's specific to the device that's behind it. Yes. Yeah, so you write a DT that says the slot. Yeah. You say I'm yeah. slot four, and four. You're yeah. you then and you know when you go and you create a PCI device behind it because then you probe the hardware. You can read the P vendor ID. So you would have a genetic compatible that would match against the platform driver, which would enable all the res all the resources, and then the PCI would. A device would be discovered. Yeah, not a platform driver. No, no. Well, no, there's a platform driver for the PCI slot. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Like the. Like, um, just like yes, driver. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like okay. That. And okay. keeping it out of the Wi Fi driver means yeah. that uh, if we have multiple different uh, ways we attach the same Wi Fi chip, yeah, that works. difference will be described in the slot representation exactly. or in the hot plug representation. And, and it'll work for any PCI. It'll work for any PCI driver. So it's, a single basic. Okay. A single. Uh, driver for slots, basically. For so again, just like onboard hub, you do not have in the onboard hub a description of all the USB devices beyond that. Well, they actually have. Um, they have. Those are describing the hub. Yeah, they do some other crazy stuff, but you can put anything beyond that, and it doesn't matter. There's another solution here, and it's already done with the uh, MDIO bus, which is also discoverable. Um, and that is basically if. Your DT has a device declared, but you haven't discovered it. Probe it anyway. So in PCI case, yeah, you would have to skip um, any config space accesses and jump yeah, into that's gonna be Well, your PCI, your PCI bus driver, that would be a platform bus driver logic. That might be a lot more work than this. Yeah. Isn't that what you, you, don't, no, you don't need no, a no, second, no, you don't need no, a your second PCI, driver? Your full PCI driver. Yes. Yeah, so Greg, I just want to point out the, the concept of a port under USB and a USB hub is sort of the equivalent of a slot. It's totally. a notion, it's exactly it's a notion right. of, a, of that. So it I, is. Think, I just want able to realize that there's a parallel between the two buses and how they're discovered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go through the slides. All right. We can discuss this. Listen, Again, listen, there is a pop session tomorrow, so make sure you're there. Um, right, so it was merging uh, 6.0. And with the purpose of working around the power up of the USB hub, uh, which basically depends on resources from device three. So just like the Wi Fi and Bluetooth uh, combo chip. So, no, so remember, Wi Fi is a device functionality, it's not a bus functionality. So it's independent. You can have the same Wi Fi controller on a USB bus or a PCI bus, it's independent. So don't think, think of these as a, the bus issue. Not the drive, not the driver that implements either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Those are independent. Okay. okay. 
uh, yeah, it solves basically, so you already know, but it solves the uh, problem by having a platform device, which has the sole purpose of powering up the hub in order to be discovered. And then the onboard hub takes care of, uh, sorry, the USB device takes care of the rest basically. And even the uh, power sequence, sorry, the, the runtime PM of the USB calls basically API from, so this is what's weird about the USB onboard hub. You have two drivers which share APIs for powering up and powering down the hub. So that's why we wanted yeah, to avoid that. We don't have a standard API like we have for hot plug for USB to enable the driver of the device to uh, and to interact with the power controller. Well, that, yes, we do. That's the hub driver. Yes. That is, we have hub drivers. That hub drive, we have a generic hub driver. We have this now. Well, this we, is we, we wrote generic hub drivers and we, these were the first ones to actually use the API oh, that actually implemented 20 years as a later. Hub this is actually implemented as a hub driver? Yes. Because he said he has private APIs. This is a hub driver. Okay. It creates platform devices, which I hate, but it works. <laughs> we couldn't, I, 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 again, 24 implement the 24 cycles of that patch set. Who wrote that they're here? Thank you. You put up with me. You put up with me. That was horrible. I'm so sorry. But I mean, you understand my hatred of it, but it works. And it actually is it's done in a way that's been flexible enough. It's handled like totally different platforms, and they all seem to work. So you did a great job. So PCI slots should do the same thing. Hey, Lauren wanted to ask something. Uh, yeah, this one thing that strikes me as a difference between USB and PCI here is that mostly for, for USB device, you will have, at least if it's a hot pluggable device, you will have the VBUS, you will have your 5 volt, and hopefully that's that's most of the things you'll need. While lots of PCIe Actually, devices that would be on board directly will have a much more complicated power sequence with multiple uh, multiple supplies. So I, I, I'm having a bit of trouble understanding how this generic slot driver or hub driver for PCI would work in that case because the supplies that it has to control and the order in which they have to be powered needs are, are, are heavily device dependent. So they're not generic. That's it's what, not generic at the PCI that's level. What the that's where the power sequence subsystem would come yes. into Yes. Yes. Okay. I was reacting to, to what Greg was saying. Yeah. Uh... yeah I, I agree. It's going to be complex. It's not going to be as simple as you want, okay. but it, you will be able to write a platform driver for your controller that's going to power up the slot. Right. So uh, going straight to the conclusion, because Onboard Hub is already known, it seems. Uh, <laughs> So discoverable buses don't use DT for discovery. This is actually what we're trying to solve. Uh, the devices don't get discovered if they're powered on, and uh, usually such buses well, lack support of powering up the devices beforehand. So uh, that kind of forces us to keep regulators always on, which impacts, again, the battery life. As for the power sequencing subsystem, this is useful. And I would say uh, optim uh, optional, if we're able to implement that sequence in the driver's probe. But since we, we would go with the onboard hub approach, you would still need the power sequencing. So we need to respin that as well. Uh, sometimes you don't have a power sequencer device, so it might not be accurate from hardware point of view. So describing a power sequencer in DT, somebody might ask, and I guess Christoph here or Rob, might ask, uh, well, is it actually a device or is it just something that you want to use to power up another device? So maybe that's a, another but, problem. Which is it. a device. It's a, there's nothing wrong with making a zillion devices. That's a device. It's addressable. It's a device. Otherwise, it's, it's it, a device you can in just Linux. Device. It's not necessarily a yeah, device. Yeah, it's a device in, in Linux. Linux. Yeah. Wait, okay. sorry. It is not a device in DT or it is a device in DT? It's not. Okay, and obviously Onboard Hub is uh, useful, but hacky, so yeah, I guess that's it. When is the buff? Tomorrow at 11, I guess. Okay. <laughs> it's a last minute uh, addition, I guess, so. Yeah, and uh, 
trying to solve this as soon as possible. <laughs> 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 Again, I'm using the expectation.